The following case studies demonstrate the importance of screening, monitoring, and managing patients following a stroke for swallowing difficulties, known as dysphagia. Dysphagia management and screening are necessary best practices required for stroke care. Dysphagia is one of the most common effects of acute stroke affecting approximately 55% of new stroke admissions. Dysphagia needs to be detected to prevent potential serious complications. As you watch this video, you will see two stroke survivors experience the onset of the signs and symptoms of a stroke and the fast reaction taken to call 911. You will observe how to perform the screening tool for acute neurological dysphagia, the stand. You will learn about potential complications that can occur if a stroke patient is not made NPO or nothing by mouth before being screened for dysphagia. You will learn what you can do to prevent complications related to dysphagia. And you can take this opportunity to celebrate how you and your patient care teams are improving stroke patient outcomes by implementing dysphagia screening, monitoring and management to reduce the risk of complications related to dysphagia. In this first case study, you will see what happens to Nora from the time she first has signs and symptoms of a stroke, through her journey in the emergency department and acute stroke unit, and how her risk for dysphagia is managed. You may be able to identify ways that Nora's care could have been changed to reduce the risk of complications related to dysphagia. In this first clip, you will see Nora experiencing a stroke. Mom, Mom, I missed the 3 o'clock bus today. I'm running late. Can I borrow your car keys? Oh, the, the car's low on gas. Mom? Mom, are you okay? Oh. Mom? Oh, Gloria. I'm fine. Mom, Mom, are you able to move your left arm? Mom, I think you're having a stroke. I'm going to call 911. Ambulance. I think my mom is having a stroke. Paramedics transported Nora to Brockville General Hospital. Nora was diagnosed with having an ischemic stroke with left-sided deficits. In the emergency department, Nora's vital signs and neurological status are frequently assessed. Her oxygen saturation level is 90% and she is placed on oxygen three liters per minute through nasal prongs. It is important to know the signs and symptoms of dysphagia. They may not be obvious. The signs and symptoms may include typical signs such as coughing and or choking, drooling or poor lip closure, pocketing of food, a weak cough, difficulty swallowing, and report of tight throat, food sticking, or pain associated with swallowing. And those signs and symptoms which may be harder to notice, such as repeated swallows, wet gurgling voice, poor intake or appetite, decreased rate of eating, slow to swallow, and delayed throat clearing after meals. A history of chest infection may also be a sign of dysphagia. As you watch this next clip, can you identify ways you could reduce the risk of complications related to dysphagia? Hello, Nora. I'm Caitlin. I'll be your nurse today. Um, how about we reposition your arm? It looks like it's on your side there. I'm just going to use the pillow to support your arm. Is that comfortable for you? Mm-hmm. I'm going to take some vital signs. I'm just going to sit you up in bed here for a minute. I have some Tylenol for you because your temperature is elevated. Can I just take, check your name tag before I give you your Tylenol? Okay. Here's your Tylenol and I have some water for you. Having difficulties? A little bit. I don't think we should have given you that Tylenol. The 
the risk of complications related to dysphagia can be reduced by keeping the stroke patient NPO until a dysphagia screen has been completed. This includes no food, liquid, ice chips, or oral medications, and in this case, no Tylenol by mouth. Performing the dysphagia screen, the stand, before the patient is allowed to have anything by mouth. Following the stroke clinical pathway, following the dysphagia screening protocol, using the pre-printed orders for stroke care, providing oral care in the morning, before and after meals, and at bedtime, and consulting the speech-language pathologist, also known as the SLP, if the patient does not pass the dysphagia screen, the stand. Nora settles into the acute stroke unit six hours after her arrival in the emergency department. Her temperature is 37.7. She is NPO and receives Tylenol per rectum. She is seen early the next morning by the SLP, and Nora is placed on a pureed diet with thickened fluids. Instructions are given to crush her medications in applesauce. A swallowing care plan is developed by the SLP and discussed with the team. The plan includes positioning and feeding techniques. Nora continues on intravenous fluids to reduce her risk of dehydration. Oral care continues in the morning, before and after all meals, and at bedtime. Nora is monitored for signs and symptoms of dysphagia for her next three meals. She is observed to have a wet, gurgling voice while eating. This is a sign of swallowing problems. As a result, the nurse removes Nora's meal and she is made NPO or nothing by mouth to reduce the risk of complications related to dysphagia. Complications related to dysphagia may include airway obstruction, aspiration pneumonia, malnutrition, dehydration, and mortality. Her temperature, pulse, blood pressure, and oxygen saturation are monitored to watch for signs and symptoms of aspiration pneumonia. Good morning, Nora. Good morning. <coughs> Nora, are you having difficulty swallowing? <coughs> yes. Okay, let's take your tray away. I don't want you to choke. No, I don't. <coughs> Nora, we're just going to check your vitals now, okay? I'm going to start with your blood pressure. Your blood pressure looks good, Nora. Nora, your oxygen's 90%, so we're going to have to turn your oxygen up. Okay, Nora, we need to take your temperature again. Nora, your temperature's 38 degrees Celsius. I'm going to go get you some Tylenol and call your doctor. Since your temperature is elevated, I've brought you a Tylenol suppository. Could I get you to move on to your left side for me, please? Yeah. Nora's oxygen saturation was 90%, so her oxygen was titrated up. Her temperature was elevated to 38 degrees, and she received Tylenol per rectum since she is NPO. A chest x-ray was done, and Nora is noted to have right lower lobe pneumonia. This may have been prevented if the dysphagia screening protocol was followed, and Nora had been NPO until the swallowing screen had been performed. The next morning, a nasogastric tube is inserted. Nasogastric feeds are started, as outlined in the pre-printed orders, to prevent dehydration and malnutrition. Nora is seen again by the dietitian and SLP. Further interventions that can be performed to reduce the risk of developing complications related to dysphagia include getting the patient up and into a chair for all meals, and keeping the head of the bed at 30 degrees or greater at all times while the patient is in bed. It is important that the dysphagia team reviews with the family the mechanisms of swallowing, how stroke can affect swallowing, why it is important to remain nothing by mouth until a swallowing screen is performed, the dysphagia screening process, and the dysphagia care plan. The Partners in Stroke Recovery, information on swallowing difficulty after stroke brochure, and the Your Stroke Journey booklet are useful patient and family education resources.
The Your Stroke Journey booklet replaces the Let's Talk About Stroke booklet and is available from the Heart and Stroke Foundation. It is a comprehensive book that helps survivors and their families understand the effects of stroke and how to manage their recovery. It can be used in the days immediately following a stroke and over the course of their journey. The patient and family need to understand that having nothing by mouth after a stroke is a necessary precaution. Ongoing reinsurance is also an important part of the patient's care. In the second case study, you will see what happens to Betty from the time she first experiences signs and symptoms of a stroke, through her journey in the emergency department and acute stroke unit, and how her risk for complications of dysphagia is managed by following the dysphagia screening protocol. In this first clip, you will see Betty experiencing a stroke. Well, that pie in the oven sure does smell good, Betty. Oh, I can't wait to have a piece of it myself. Did you hear about Karen and Joe? They're having a 25th wedding anniversary, and they are planning a breakaway. I'd like to get away right now. I'm really getting tired of this never-ending winter we seem to be having. Betty, are you okay? I can't What's move. wrong? I can't move. No. Betty, can you move your left arm? No. Can you can no. you move your your left leg? No. I can't move my I can do my left. Oh, I can't do it. No. Betty, I'm going to call an ambulance. I'm going to be right back. Okay. Paramedics transported Betty to Kingston General Hospital, where she received intravenous TPA, the clot-busting drug. Betty remained NPO for the first 24 hours after receiving intravenous TPA. The next day, Betty was transferred to the acute stroke unit at Brockville General Hospital. The RN receiving Betty notes that Nora is NPO. After assessment, it was identified that she is on day two of the ischemic stroke clinical pathway. She will now be screened for dysphagia. This is the screening tool for acute neurological dysphagia, the STAND. The STAND includes an initial assessment and three swallowing challenges. Puree using applesauce or pudding, water from a cup, and water with a straw. At any time, if there are problems noted, as outlined on the screening tool, the screen is discontinued and an order for ASLP referral is obtained. These problems include coughing or throat clearing, a wet gurgling voice, holding food in the mouth, pocketing food in the cheek, loss of food from the mouth, a delayed difficult or painful swallow, tearing with swallowing effort, and oxygen desaturation or shortness of breath. If the patient passes the screen, the patient may have an order for diet as tolerated with regular liquids and will then be observed for the next three meals using the stand monitoring record. All patients will continue to be monitored for signs and symptoms of swallowing difficulty or symptoms of silent aspiration including temperature spikes, decreased oxygen saturation during eating, and breath sound changes. Oral care is performed before and after the screen. Preparing to perform the stand. After assessing Betty to be awake and alert, a trained stand nurse proceeds with dysphagia screening using the stand. Before the screening, Betty is assisted to sit upright with her trunk in the midline position. The lighting is determined to be adequate and distractions are reduced. Oral suctioning equipment is available. The nurse will now perform the initial assessment and three swallowing challenges. Hi Betty, I'm Caitlin. I'll be the nurse with you. I'm going to set you up here and we're going to do the stand tool to see how your swallowing is. I just want to test your oxygen first and see how your oxygen is doing. Just want to make sure that your lips aren't too dry, so I'm going to put some Vaseline on your lips. Okay. I'm just going to brush your teeth to keep, make sure your mouth nice and clean. Okay, Betty, we're going to continue on with your stand tool. Um, your oxygen's on, you're reading 95, that's really good. 
I just want you to open your mouth and be able to say ah for me, a, a long, long ah, okay? Ah. Perfect. That looks good. Mm. We're going to start by having some applesauce, just a small teaspoon. Just swallow, okay? That seem to be okay for you? Yes. Excellent. Now I have some water here. I just want you to tr be able to try and drink some from the cup. If you have any difficulties, let me know. And repeat saying off. Uh. We're going to add a straw this time and see how you do. Good. Oxygen's still good. Can you open up and give me one more long awe? Uh, Perfect. Okay, Betty, that's the last of the screening. Okay. And you pass the stand tool. Betty passes the stand. A regular diet with regular liquids are ordered, and the stand form is placed in the patient's chart. Betty is observed for the first three meals following the dysphagia screen, watching for any of the swallowing difficulties outlined in the stand monitoring record. Betty will continue to be monitored even after the first three meals for overt signs of swallowing difficulty and for symptoms of silent aspiration, including fever, decreased oxygen saturation during eating, and changes in breath sounds. Remember, a patient's condition can vary significantly post-stroke, especially in the first 48 hours. These changes may affect swallowing. Thus, it is important to continue to monitor for signs of swallowing difficulty and symptoms of silent aspiration. If Betty failed the stand, you would keep her NPO and obtain a physician order for SLP referral, address change of route for PO medications with the physician, and consider a physician order for referral to a dietitian if there is any delay in SLP assessment. Don't forget to do ongoing patient and family education. You and your patient care teams are improving patient outcomes by implementing screening, monitoring, and management interventions to reduce the risk of complications related to dysphagia.